This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul renting, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. I have actually been out of this office for a while. Oh. Oh, and it's so nice to be back in it. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. You know, narrator, it's been a while since I've done this. I kind of wanted to explore a bit, just get the lay of the land again, you know, rediscover the office. Was this the cup always here? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. It's just, it's been months since I played this game and it's such a good game and I want to get back into it. I want to finish. I want to finish. Bucket. <laughs> Hey Bucket, where, where do we stand? Do I like you? Do I hate you? Like, I kind of vaguely remember hating you. Nah, I, I, I kind of hated you passionately. I don't like you, Bucket. I don't... I don't hate you. You're fine. I guess. Okay. It's Bucket time. Yeah, no. I don't like you, Bucket. I don't like you. Holding you in my hand makes me uncomfortable. It makes me unhappy to have you in my life. We're married, aren't we? Stanley touched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Do you ever get just like this soul-crushing feeling of deja vu like you're about to make a decision that's about to impact your whole life i get that every time i go through these doors and then i die i don't want to do it like the flashbacks are coming back and i'm terrified and excited and this place is creepy and... <sighs> like that's creepy. This is creepy. That's just creepy. Don't do that. That's just creepy. Like I have such fond memories of this family parable. I love this game, but... <sighs> Construct new structurally sound bridge. Retrieve Chris's remains from the warehouse floor. People died here. I've died here. A lot. I shouldn't like this game. I don't like this game. I don't like this bucket. I don't like this game. I like you, narrator. I like you, narrator. I, you're okay. 
We've been through stuff. You've been tortured just as much as I have, so. Somewhere both red and blue. Who are you? I don't know. I'm Stanley. Well, I'm Altisu. Did you know Altisu is an anagram for Stanley? True story. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. You know, okay, narrator. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and follow you. Just cause I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm jumpy. I'm unprepared. I don't like this. I don't like any of this. It is amazing how this game evokes so much fear. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would, and he knew it. The two of no. them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was we're so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. I'm gonna be real. I think I did something wrong. Because I don't like you, bucket. I don't. You freak me out. You terrify me. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. I'm Trying to a input moment. anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. I'm aware the combination is 2845. I have it on a sticky note around here somewhere. It's also like embedded two, in my eight, skull. 2845. Shut up! I'm having a moment. I'm refeeling things I haven't felt in a while. I am processing coming back to a familiar. For good, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. I said I liked you, narrator. Please. Don't make me take that back. Like, I know we have this snarky thing between us. But we've also been through stuff. Don't make me take any of that back. I will happily leave this being like, I don't like this place, I don't like this bucket, and I don't like you, narrator. That's a possibility. That can happen. I'm fine. It's fine. It is the game. This is just the game. This should not invoke this level of emotion in me. It's okay. Everything is fine. Creepy buttons aside, there are no dangers. There are only snarky and sassy characters. Character one, singular. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. You're evil. That's why I don't like you, Bucket, because you're evil. You're primordial evil pretending to be a bucket. You're brainwashing people. You're in league with some weird wizard. It's all coming back to me. It's a little fuzzy. But yeah. Screw you, bucket. You did that. I know you did. I don't want to go. I don't want to do it. No. We're going to go do the other thing. 
because I don't Wait, feel Stanley like said to the right bucket. Now. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. Um, that's new. Wait, what's up with the number three? Like, I've pressed the number eight before. What's with the number three? Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Okay, let's go. Well, he said, the number three is such a special button, I'm having the time of my life. Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. No, this is about right. You're never on my side, Bucket. Like, I'm excited to do something, and you're not. I hate you. Eight is a cooler number, anyways. Eight. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. No, you know, it's okay, bucket. You and I never got... You and I never meet each other eye to eye. You don't understand things like I do. You don't understand why I hate you. No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. You know, you, you could at least try, bucket. You could at least try. Like, I'm trying to do a thing, and you're, you're not giving me anything. Here we go, okay, said Stanley. Excited. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all. Only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. I was excited. I was excited to come back to this game. To see the narrator. To even see this stupid bucket. And you're kind of ruining it right now, Bucket. I hate you. Again. It is an, in it's an inanimate object. It's not real. I'm arguing with the Bucket. This game has robbed me of some part of my sanity. Stanley and the Bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the Bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the Bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? It is an inanimate object. It is a Bucket. Or it is a prime evil. In no situation is the bucket a good thing. I don't like you, bucket. I don't. It has taken literally less than 10 minutes for me to come back to this and realize how much I deeply despise you and want you to die. I'm fine. Okay. Pack up. <laughs> said Stanley. I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. 
he decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others. It would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. And it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. The public, the public maybe. I'm sure people will love the number three as much as they love the number eight. The number eight was amazing. The number three, it's not the number eight, but it's, it's a solid number. It's prime. For months, he advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it until it couldn't be refined a single measure further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. It's not going to matter to you, Bucket, is it? Nothing's going to change the Bucket's mind. The Bucket sucks. I hate this Bucket. Q&A with world's first sentient machine. I'd probably get along with this machine more than I would you, Bucket. Three. I don't like you. I like the number three. You don't like the number three. I think we should break up. We should get a divorce on the basis this that was you it. don't believe One in last I like. chance to win the bucket over. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. The freedom ending. Narrator Airlines. I played the demo. I did play the demo. Demo is solid. Eight. Three. This is your last chance, Bucket. This is your last chance. Like you, you can agree with me on this whole three thing. If not, you have to admit that we have nothing in common and we're getting a divorce. I don't want to live with you. I don't want to go back to our apartment. I don't want to go back to our hole. I want you to die, quite frankly. I will settle for a divorce, but I don't like you, Bucket. There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting, he was a failure, and in that moment Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent, and so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit, only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, Having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Okay, fair. I was wrong about the number three. But everything else makes absolute sense. You, Bucket, where are you? All of his co-workers were gone. No, shut what up. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he you. had simply missed a memo. You and I just don't see eye to eye. It never ends well. It never ends well. I don't like you, Bucket. You don't like me. But there is more game to be played. So I will play nice. Till I find all the endings. And then I'm going to murder you. 